Good evening and welcome to the service of Compline or night prayer. My name is Karen. I'm one of the priests at St. Paul's Bloor Street and it is great to have you joining me this evening. If you'd like to follow along with the order of service, you can find that in the video description. There's a link there or you can simply pray along with me silently and of course that is fine. We are continuing um, to follow along with the sermon series that we're preaching on Sundays at St. Paul's, and so we're doing the E100 reading series, 100 of the essential passages of Scripture that kind of show the arc of uh, the story of Scripture, the story of everything as we're calling it on Sundays. And we are almost to the end. We've got, this is the third last week. So this week is... Um, the Apostle Paul, and he is talking to the leaders of the church. And so it, there are a number of excerpts of uh, writings from the Apostle Paul talking to church leaders. And in particular, Timothy. Uh, so our scripture reading this evening will be from Paul's letter to Timothy. And now I invite you to Take a moment to still your hearts and calm your souls, to remember we're coming into the presence of God who loves each of us and knows exactly where we're coming from at this point. Um, maybe you want to light a candle and enter into God's presence that way. And now let's begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We hear your voice, O Lord Jesus, saying, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. We come into your presence weary and burdened with our sins and with the cares and distractions of the world. Let us rest a while in your sacred presence. Let our hearts find rest here. Let nothing separate us from you here in this world or in the world to come. Amen. And now I invite you to think through the past day or the past week with everything that it's held, both the good and the bad, and to lift that up to our loving God. And now praying together, O merciful Jesus, ever present and with a heart ready to receive all who come to you weary and heavy laden, give us a spirit of sincere repentance, a strong hope in your mercy, and a lasting desire to grow in virtue and to walk in your way. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. For our Compline hymn this evening, we are going to do an ancient hymn, a very ancient hymn, coming from Romans chapter 11, verses 33 to 36. This is a hymn that was um, sung in the church from the earliest days. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or, to, or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. And once again, that is from Romans 11, end of the chapter. Loki has decided to join us, but he is off camera at the moment. He's sitting right beside me. For our psalm this evening, we will use the traditional, one of the traditional Compline psalms, Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that by night stand in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. 
Amen. As I said at the beginning, our scripture reading this evening will be taken from uh, the second letter, or second letter to Timothy by the Apostle Paul, and it is one of his last writings, maybe the last, I'm not sure. Uh, but he is giving Timothy instructions and advice uh, as kind of a parting gift. He's almost to the end of his life. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, 10 through chapter 4, verse 8. Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, and my suffering, the things that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of, the, of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also all to, to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's so much in that passage to reflect on. Uh, what strikes me this evening is how confidently Paul is ending his life, saying he's fought the good fight. He's finished the race. He's kept the faith. And what a gift that uh, is to be able to say that sort of thing. And what an inspiration, I think, to us to hold on, to continue in the faith, and to be able to say at the end that we have fought the good fight. We have finished the race and we have kept the faith. And now moving on to the responsories. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And now the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon, beginning and ending with the refrain. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. 
For our time of prayer this evening, we will do as we often do and have a time of intercession and then a time of thanksgiving. So I invite you to think first of those needs and concerns that you have heard around the world. Remembering, of course, the war in Ukraine and the suffering that the people are undergoing. But also all the other places of suffering in the world. When we think of Christians around the world who are undergoing persecution for their faith, pray that they would know the hope of the Easter gospel and be encouraged to keep strong and to keep the faith. Now I invite you to think of the needs of our country, um, our leaders, provincial and federal, the upcoming election in Ontario, the flooding in Manitoba, and all other needs and concerns for our country our province, and our cities. And now we turn our hearts to those who have asked for prayer that we know, those who need prayer but haven't asked for it, our friends and our families and our loved ones. Lifting up to God those who are sick, those who are in distress, those who are grieving. Those with relational difficulties. Those longing for something. We trust that God hears each of those prayers and knows each of those situations intimately. And now we pray for ourselves, for the things that may be on our hearts and minds that we may need or want, the secret longings, the secret fears. hopes and joys, and we lift all of that up to our loving God, knowing that he knows our situations as well, and he loves us dearly. And now we turn our hearts to thanksgiving and gratitude, and we praise God for himself and for all the good things that he pours onto us. I am especially grateful this week for the beautiful weather that we have had and for the chance to garden. Give thanks for that. And maybe there are other things that have brought a smile to your face that you want to give thanks to God for. And especially we give thanks for the gift of Jesus and that he has given himself for us so that we may be with him. Now we collect all our prayers in the words of the Collect. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. And now praying together as Jesus taught his friends and his followers to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Christ, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you tonight and this week and always. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Um, next week we will do a Compline for Ascension, uh, which is next Thursday, a week from Thursday, um, and we'll celebrate that one day early. So that's next week. And meanwhile, take care and hopefully, I hope you have a wonderful week.